Yo, what's up? Welcome to the J Bling TV podcast presents the monster moves. I got my man right here, Kenny Brooks in the building. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> the funny salesman. Everybody know who I'm talking about. I mean, if you if you don't know, now you know this guy right here is the GOAT when it comes to door-to-door sales. You know what I'm saying? How you doing, bro? What brings you here to L.A., my guy? Man, out here, we back at it again. Just flew in, but I'm um, filming. Got a, um, I'm in a movie. We did like an NDA, so <laughs> I not. can't really say too much, but it's a, um, yeah, it's a nice, um, movie it's um king botch movie it's oh called dope. miles rider dope dope so it's your first second movie third movie what yeah just like my um third so, so well third for credits i did a movie called carol's christmas shout out to um david womack he in vegas matter of fact he put me in my first movie it was called carol's christmas when was this when was this this was like in 2020 like last year oh last year during the pandemic <clears throat> and all that yeah so was it before everything shut down or while things were shut down or after things it, was, it was when stuff was shut down oh yeah, so we it was on the have, go yeah we, we had <laughs> we had masses and everything we wow. had masked up yeah so that was that was when like it wasn't really bad like stuff wasn't shut down yet dope dope so when it comes to like you know when, when people reached out to you were you reaching out to them to get on these movie sets or were you let or or were they reaching out to you yeah they they basically was reaching out to me um like like david reached out to me he thought i was still in vegas i was like no nah, i moved back to detroit because so like you, when so you moved to vegas yeah i was in vegas for like nine months to a year okay i was there damn near the whole 2020 like no i moved to vegas like 2019 and then i was there like 2020 and i left like that middle, from from middle. detroit no, I'm from L.A., from out here, oh, from so you, Cali. Okay, I, okay. I was born in Detroit, and then once I went, like, super viral, like, I started, like, I was a traveling salesman until, like, 2017. That's when I, like, really got out the sales game, and I would try to perfect my comedy. I was still back and forth because I was confused. Cause I, you okay, know. all right. So I'm, I'm happy. Speaking of the, the door-to-door sales, that started in what city? Um, Detroit. I started doing door-to-door sales, and I was, like, 11 or 12 doing I, I was i was selling detroit news and free press like the newspaper <laughs> so i had like a paper out when i was little so what was your what was your get up when it came to like you know what i'm saying getting get as an 11 year old yeah doing door to door i, I saw my mom like because we ain't had no father figure we had like stepdads like but my, i see my mom she had worked two jobs to make sure we have food on the table clothes on our back and like i was just explaining this today on set like at break i was telling people like how like when i was little i had a different type of hunger than like kids nowadays you know what i'm saying right, right. like i seen my mama work two jobs and i knew she couldn't buy me no jordans i remember we had good fella boxes you know what i'm saying like right. <laughs> we, like, <laughs> like we focus hope and stuff like that we like the struggle was real and that's what i learned like at a young age like he who suffer remembers i remember like I, I was like 12 i was 11 or 12 and i grew like four or five inches i went from like five one to like five six five seven and that was like tall for you know what I'm right saying? that's like, tall yeah that that's was like tall. that was tall for like a <laughs> that's a, a, like grown a, man yeah, like for like a seven uh, like 11 12 year old so I was like man I'm about to try out for basketball and like growing up in the inner city you know like we influenced by like basketball or rap you know what I'm saying exactly. like so I was like exactly. I, I, I'm gonna either play basketball or I'm gonna try. I can't rap. You know what I'm saying? I can't even rap gifts on Christmas. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta try. I'm gonna, I would try basketball. I, like I grew some inches for a reason. Then my uncle, he was like successful in basketball. He played like college, went overseas and played. He was like, like he, he was like six ten, six eleven. So Sheesh. like height was coming in our family. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh-huh. I'm like, dang, I'm gonna be tall. This is like twelve years old. So I remember going to school, and I had like some. I don't even remember the shoes. They, I, I think they was like some XJ 900s or some Pro Wigs. It, it was something that, and I know they was like some bowling shoes. I was in school and I was sliding across the gym like it was crazy. I did the slew, slew, I slid, I slid from the gym to the lunchroom like it was crazy. So like they was talking about me. So I went home mad. I was like, my, 
you got to give me some shoes. I was like, you got to uh, buy me some shoes. And she was like, boy, I ain't got no money to buy you no shoes. So unfortunately, like in Detroit, we got these um, telephone poles. And they had pe- like people with staple like the jobs and stuff like, right. uh, are you free to yeah. travel? Um, call yeah. this number. I know you can make $50 a day. I'm like, oh, $50 a day? I, it they didn't even say what it was. I just saw $50 a day. I'm like, that's enough for some shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I went out, you know what I'm saying, with the paper out. When, when I called the job, shout out to Robert Nixon too. I remember him like yesterday. And it's funny because... <laughs> The old man skit I did, it reminded me of like, you know what I'm saying? Like how uh-huh. he like how Rob, like that's why I got the little like the little stuff. Like it was cause he he was a he was a our sales manager, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And um what's crazy, my childhood friend, shout out to Jabari. I was just with him like a couple weeks ago. He's like, bro, you need to do like an old man character. <laughs> It'll be funny, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And that that was just like overnight. But what's crazy is that I remember like going door to door at like 11, 12 years old. And I only did it. See, I had a short term goal. That goal was like, I want to make $50, give me some shoes and I'm going to quit play basketball. But once I found like my niche at like 12 years old, like I started falling in love with it. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. I was damn near making my money like as, as an 11, 12 year old, then like my older siblings, aunties, uncles, I think probably my mom too at the time. You know what I'm saying? I was making like two to three hundred dollars. And that's what I loved about sales. It ain't no selling of your income. I learned that like at an early age. Right, right. You can go from Welfare to Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? You can go to sleep <laughs> broke and make wake up to five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? This is it's true. It's just if your hustle right. You know what I'm saying? This is true. So I knew this at like twelve years old. I'm I, I went from like it, it was crazy because like when I started selling I forgot about the shoes, you know what I'm saying? I was like, forget those shoes. I'm about to, this is a, this so, is. So how were you selling so so frequent? Was it because there was a demand of the product? No, it was like my personality. Like, I'm going to tell you like how it even happened. Like, I remember it like, okay, like the first day, right? The first day, uh, the first day of me selling, I was like kind of nervous, right? Mm-hmm. So his, uh, his brother was like, we going to have you doing a paper route. They had one person um, was carrying a wagon with the newspaper, and he just threw it to addresses. Then they had another person that had trained you to go up because he had like his nephews. I remember they, both of the nephews was named after like Robert. His son was named after him, and then his uh, his uh, his his other nephew, I, Robert. He had a uh, son named after his brother Clifford. Then he had his nephew named after him robert you know what i'm saying uh-huh, so they uh-huh. was like training me but at the same time i already had a little bit experience with just not really sales just with life you know what i'm saying because right. i was like I, I was hustling like all my life but i was doing like negative stuff you know what i'm saying like i used to like like what we call in detroit like hit licks you know what i'm saying yeah like because you got to survive it's survival this of the fittest true. so this i was doing negative stuff and was like i was like man i gotta turn this into positive because right. i seen some of my childhood friends going to jail and getting murdered at like wow. 11 12 years you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, i'm like yeah. man i can't keep doing so and then my mother always told me like boy you go like you know how you hear that at a young age like when you going down the wrong path they, you ain't gonna make it to see 18 exactly yeah. so i was like oh i gotta change so right then and there i got that paper out but like i said i didn't get the paper out because i was in trouble i got that paper out because i wanted some shoes you know what i'm saying right, right. but what's crazy is that the first day uh I, I was like a paper boy and we threw the paper to the wrong house and a dude started tripping. He started cussing us out. He's like, what are you doing? Why y'all keep throwing papers at this uh, address? We been stopped, uh, we been canceled this subscription. I said, sir, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, would you spank both of them? He was like, no. I was like, well, you shouldn't spank me about the bad performance of the company. Let me call my stupid advisor. And then he started <laughs> laughing. And then I upgraded him like Beyonce. And then right then and there, they made me a salesperson right there. Word. It was like, oh, yeah, he, he 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 got what it takes. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, so right. So right then and there, like, they, because, like, when I first came in the game, like, at 12 years old, they had, we had, like, a script that we had to read. Like, hi, my name is Kenny Brooks. I'm working towards a college education. You can help by trying to Detroit News and Free Press. <laughs> One yeah, subscription. That. I remember, like, yesterday. And I was like, this shit longer than ketchup. You know, excuse my French, <laughs> my China. But I was like, I can't really, like, Say something that I'm not. I'm not working towards a college education at 11 years old. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. Like, I'm not about that. I'm working towards some uh some, some shoes exactly. Because I want to get rid of these XJ 900s. Like, I got on some I got on some alphabet shoes, and I don't even know about alphabet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. So that was my whole goal. Was that you know what I mean? And then once I started like being myself, finding myself my niche, and then adding personality with it, that's how I started taking over. I was like killing them. You know what I'm saying? Like. 
Really? At like 12 years old? Yeah. How'd like you come up with to, to know to say, yo, you can't judge me off of my stupid visor? How do you have these these, these sayings? Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I think I'm like one of a kind. I ain't gonna lie. Because like right at the, like, I started helping other people with like lines. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like this at like 12. Like, I like that's what I'm saying. Like, I start, like, the my, it was only supposed to be a temporary job. Like, I get some shoes, boom, go back to school, play basketball, quit that job. But like I said, when I started making money and started having fun and started writing down jokes and stuff, like, and I, like, I mainly was listening to like back in the day, like when I was coming out, I was listening to like Nas, Jay Z, Eminem, okay. Biggie Smalls, okay. Tupac. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Lyricists, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. They ain't got that right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, j- like fabulous Jada Kids, this you know what true. I'm saying? Cassidy, Damn, like I was listening got, to we, you just Lil said, Wayne, got, like they all metaphors. So I was everybody. like, they, so they, 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 they motivated me and captivated me to elevate my thinking. I'm like, okay, I got to be quick with the word. That's why my wordplay, like everybody, be like, man, you should be a rapper. I'd be like, no, I just like. You know what I'm saying? That that then was my idols coming up. You know what I'm saying? Right, Just because yeah. of their wordplay, I'm like, dang, this is a, so I, that's what really like enticed me to like put my words together and then just use like metaphors or one liners. You know what I'm saying? Like Damn. so, I was just writing that like at, as a young at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Dang. So, so, so you seasoned when it comes to like you know them, them lines, them hits. It's, it's like second nature for you. Yeah. As far as talking to so somebody else, may be like, yo, yeah. but to you, it's like I've been doing this forever. It's, right. It's, it's normal to me. It's not it was like I was born to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because like I read a lot of books too. Like I didn't really start reading books until like um, at the high school. Like my 12th grade year, I was supposed to graduate, but my grandmother passed away. So I didn't even finish 12th grade. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. right after that, I just went straight out of town, started doing the traveling newspaper job. You know what I'm saying? Not newspaper, traveling cleaner. You know what I'm saying? So that, I was like from, 19. Went from, 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 from newspapers so I went from So I went cleaner. from selling from like 12 to 14. Okay. And then, like around fourteen and a half, fifteen years old, I grew like another four or five inches. I was like six feet six one. So I was like, oh, I'm about to take basketball serious. You know what I'm saying? So right. then I transferred schools, and then I started playing basketball for Detroit City High from like my sophomore year all the way to my senior year. I played for them two years. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then my grandmother passed away when I was like eighteen, my senior year. And I was supposed to graduate that year, but it just messed that, you that up. yeah it messed me up because she was like super close to me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So after that, I was like. Man, I, I I knew I made the wrong decision by not finishing school, and my mother didn't play. She was like, "You, you gonna get a job, or you got to get out of here." Yeah, right. So I, I yeah, I got up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. and I went out of town, and then that's when it was. The rest was history. Like I I did the door to door again. You know what I'm saying? And uh-huh. we was going state to state. We was going state to state. I remember. So I was, so what were you? So you going state to state? What are you selling? Is it, are you? Yeah, I was selling like an all purpose cleaner. And I went, I, I went out of town with my brother, my older brother, and like he couldn't shake it. He quit. Like wow, he had wow. quit as soon as he got there. Like, huh? Why he quit? Why he quit? Uh, it wasn't. They was getting them together like a family reunion. He couldn't really <laughs> sell. He was like, he, he he had made up excuse and everything. I think I forgot what it was, but I know he really couldn't sell. Like he, he it wasn't him. But thank God that he told me about the job. You know what I'm saying? Because right. we both was like staying with my uncle at the time. And right. we was trying to like do negative stuff, trying to sell drugs. I'm like, man, I, I ain't never sold drugs. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I was like, I knew this wasn't for me. That probably was for him. But at the time, I don't even think that was for him. So I was like, man, I'm going to go to what I know best. Exactly. I, I was killing at 12 to 14. I took some years off. Let me go back and rejuvenate. You know what I'm saying? So I went out of town. My first day, I made like two, three hundred dollars. My first day, I wrote like six. Like the new person quota was like six. I wrote like six or seven my first day. I trained like a half a day. You know what I'm saying? And then I wrote what a new person posed to write. I wrote like one over my quota. So they was like, man, this guy, he used to sell something before. They was like, they first day, and they went for me buying my own sales. I was like, man, this guy bought his own sales. I was like, bro, I was on a Greyhound for three days. Mm. I, like, I remember like yesterday, I was on a Greyhound from Detroit. It took us three days to get to Minnesota. Like, that was where, like, we went to, uh, I remember like yesterday, no, we was in like Pennsylvania. We was in like Morgantown, Pennsylvania. That's when I, I like we traveled from Detroit. They hired me. They put me on a Greyhound, and I was and I and I said the two. I was like, "This the brokers I'ma ever be." I said, "I'm a I'm I'm get I'm getting out of Detroit on a Greyhound to wherever I'm going, Minnesota, California, uh uh uh, uh so Pitt, 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 Pennsylvania." I said, "I'm not coming back like this." You know what I mean? Wow. I'm a fly back. I'm a drive back. I'm gonna do something. I'm not gonna come back like this. You know what I mean? That's right. was my mindset. So when I got here, I said, "I'm gonna make the best of it." But my brother, he didn't have that same mentality. He was like, "I'm just about to go try this out." Me, I was like, "I'm about to go make a killing without a machine gun," because I already knew how to sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just yeah. that it ain't matter the product. So then that's when I tapped in with books. 
because I remember Bill Cosby said this a long time ago. He said, you want to have something from a, he was like, you want to have something from a, um, he was like, you want to have something from a nigga, put it in a book. Ooh. Oh, man. So I was like, wow. Wow. That's, that's a, that is capturing right there. Yeah. Golly. So I, after that, I was like, man, even a dummy know to buckle up. So I was like, it's a <laughs> lot of stuff that I learned door to door that I didn't learn in school. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said that like on my video, like two years of door to door traveling is equivalent to four years of college communication. How you interact with different people. Like I'll be telling people to this day, I tell my kids that and everything. I got my kids reading books like at 11, 10 years old. Like I right. got them reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, How to right. Win Friends and Fools People. You know what I'm saying? Like these books that they ain't gonna teach you in school, teach you how to be independent. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Generational wealth because the, I, I didn't get taught this. I had to learn this, you know what I'm saying? But I had read books, and that's what really made me stronger than the Holy Ghost. Like, it made me elevate my thinking. It made me, like, untouchable when I was dealing with customers, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, like I had, you had to have tough skin. And, you know, like, where we come from, like, I'm pretty sure where you come from, we got to, if we could survive where we come from, it ain't nothing. Yeah, to the to, everywhere you know else. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah. So I'm like, I come from Detroit, Michigan. Like, this, this is nothing, you know what I mean? Knocking on some doors, like, talking to this. 90 pound housewife, I'm gonna get her together. You know what I'm saying? She with me. So that's how I felt. And that's how I was trained. You know what I'm saying? So I just started reading a lot of books, building, 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 like working on my um personal, like my personal uh mentality, just my my emotions, you know what I'm saying? Because I learned that sales is 90% mental and it's 10% physical. That's the walking and talking, you know what I mean? Right. Because exactly. if you ain't got it up here, then it's over with. So what was your, your most motivating book? What was your what was the book that said, yo, this one right here changing everything? Think and Grow Rich. Oh my God. You know Napoleon yeah. Hill. Yeah. My mom gave me that book, bro. That, that, that changed was, everything yeah, for that me. That changed everything for me too, I swear. Like as soon as I read that, I started understanding life more. You know what just, I'm saying? Uh, it just it just it's like it clicks. Yeah. Like, oh. It just wake you up like, okay, this is Hunger Games. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because it's uh, every other book. I done read a lot of books. I'm still reading books. Like, I got a lot of favorite books. Like, and, and like that, that was one of the books that really, like, okay, this is not a game. Like, I started thinking like that when hey, I read that. So, 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 like, so now you're in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and this is where the viral clip happens? No. That, see, I, I, when I, um, Went door to door in Pennsylvania. That was like in 2004 or five. That's when I first came in the game. It was oh like 2004 God. or five. I didn't go viral till like five years later, like 2010. Well, and you were the first, you know, it's crazy. Viral, I would say you were the first of the viral nation of people happening because right. I remember when I came across, I was like, yo, who is this dude? That's hilarious and so witty. Like, right. this is unreal. There's people like this exist in the world. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, God damn. So 2004. Yeah. 2000, like the end of 2004, I say 2005, I came in. I remember it was like, um, it was like, yeah, it was like, because I supposed to graduate in 2004 and I came like, in like that summer. It was like the summer of 2004. I didn't really like, like really elevate in sales to like 2005. I was there like five, six months till I started beating like experienced people. You know what I'm saying? But I came in as a new man beating all the new people. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right, I couldn't right. even be in the new people pools or none of that. Like new people bonuses. Like, oh, it was like, yo, who is, who is this dude? How is he doing this? Yeah. So like we travel like. It got to a point like my first 30 days, I was training people. They had me like a training ambassador. I was like training other people. Like Now, were they trying to learn your wit? Yeah, they was like, because they, they was calling me like one-liner king. Like, man, this guy, you got he just funny. Like, people already knew like I was funny. And then that, like my trainer, shout out to um, Donald Davis, Mr. Davis, he trained me. And, he, and like, like when he showed me that all you got to do is be goofy and be funny and be yourself. And once you sell, like Zig Ziglar sells, sell the sizzle, they're going to buy the steak. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that, like, you can have a bag full of shit, excuse me, but if you got personality, <laughs> they're going to buy the personality, and then the shit is just a bonus. You know what I'm exactly, saying? Exactly. Like, it don't really matter what you're selling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to go to the door like, look, I ain't a prostitute, but I'm going to sell myself first, and then you're going to get this. You know what I'm saying? I used to tell them that because I knew that they wasn't buying that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you, so in the back of your head, you're like, yo, I got this all-purpose cleaner. Yeah. 
But I'm going to make, I'm going to, yeah, like, pretty I'm, much you were the Wolf of Wall Street before yeah. we watched Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. And he was like, sell me this pen. Yeah. <laughs> so you were selling some some yeah. some all-purpose cleaner that you were like, yo, it's whatever, but yeah. I'm going I'm to make this feel like you ain't yeah. finding this nowhere else. Yeah, you ain't going to find, I got something that you ain't never seen in your life. That's why I used to tell him, look, uh, what I used to say, I said, uh, I said, uh, I used to be like, look, we live, we, we live in and I'm colored. That's what I used to tell her. We live, we live in, and I'm color. Like, you know, and live in color. Right, cause right. Because you, you ain't going to never see this again. Fast. You can go to the store. You can get Windex, Simple Green, OxyClean, Mr. Clean, Love My Carpet, Hate My Carpet, Wishing That, Bar the Carpet, Main Green, X14, <laughs> OxyClean, Pine Saw, all those other cleaners. And they said it's like a pregnant lady on welfare don't work. But one thing I can say that work is these jokes. Cause you and then right when they laughing, that's when I close them. I ask for the money. Because they, they be like, ha, ha. They ain't going to be laughing and say no. They ain't going to be like, ha, ha, no, I don't want it. They ain't gonna be like, oh God, you so them right, out. right when they laugh and I'm closing them out. So did you, know you ever do like any conferences and stuff? Like- yeah, I'm doing that. I got one coming up. Like, like soon as I leave here from filming this movie, I'm going right to Houston. I got for three days. I got like a conference. And, like, and you pitch showing them how to sell. Yeah, teach people how to sell and stuff. It's like a solar company. Like I just brand. I like basically my. We just like collabing together. So like, like oh. I'm gonna be like helping them recruit other salespeople, and they gonna you, be under my leadership and stuff like you that. You said one key thing just now to me. You're not gonna be like ha 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 at your jokes. No, I don't want it. Yeah. Soon as you know that laugh yeah. comes, like Ch-ch-ch. yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Cause like they they forget that I'm a salesperson. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Cause right. it's a thin line between kind artist and salesperson. So how you dealing with a person who's just angry? They come to the door just angry. How yeah. you deal with that? Oh, uh, I'm beating the brakes off of them. Word. With just personality. Word. Hey, don't shoot. Don't beat me up. I ain't pissing your cornflakes. Can I just say one thiggity thing and I'm be like Michael Jackson to beat it? Because, you know, laughter is the best medicine for the heart. You know, they say every time you make someone laugh, it add 10 more years to their life. Man, uh-huh. I wish I could have made Woody used to laugh. I would have bought her a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like I, so it, they ain't got no choice but to be happy because they look like, damn. I need to smile real fast because somebody facts. passed away and she can't smile no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So I'm looking at like, you know what I'm saying? Someone else trash is someone else treasure. How can you be upset with the world and you still breathing? This is true. And Eric Gardner not. Right. Uh, Remember? That's I can't deep. breathe. That's deep. You know, see how I be thinking? It's like, so I'm already going like, to let them know like they can't touch me like MC Hammer said. But at the same time, I'm there for a reason, not the season. So I'm already two steps ahead of them. You know what I'm saying? Because we have meetings to prepare ourselves. The five P's, proper preparation, poor prepare, performance. So we have meetings to be like this. They don't have meetings at their house. They don't be like, hey, we going to have a, that's girl, Susan, call Karen right now. Karen, call uh, Jay Bling, Jay Bling, call Ricky. Guess what we going to do? We going to have a neighborhood watch meeting. Hey, what you going to tell that salesperson tomorrow when he knock on your door? Oh, I ain't got no money. That's a good one. Let me write that down. Oh, what you gonna tell us? They ain't having no meat is with the tell us. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They just come to the door and say whatever. Right. Like, and that's what I'm saying. I remember one day, like, I knocked on this lady door. I swear to God, this is what I didn't believe. Shit the people said when I knocked on their door. Cause this lady, she had tricked the shit out of me. Like the only comeback I could never get rid of was I'm on the phone. Like every time they's like, I'm on the phone. Okay, God bless you. We're gonna see you around like a donut. I'm on the phone. Okay, be good to yourself. I, like every time they said, I'm, I'm on the phone, I leave a house. Until one day, this lady's like, I'm on the phone. I was like, All right, God bless. As soon as I was picking up my bag, the phone rang on her ear. Like, Kring. she like, I was like, Oh, I need to get one of those. She was like, What? The one that don't ring before you answer? And then she started <laughs> laughing and I sold her. So after that, I ain't listening to nothing else they said after that because I'm like, This uh. lady been tricking me. F- They've been tricking me for, for years. years. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I could never get over that one comeback. You know what I'm saying? He said, I need to get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that, that don't read before you ask me. <laughs> yeah, because like, th- that's what I'm saying. But like, I, I, like I, I, I trained myself to be like this because I had like notebooks. Like, that's what I loved about Drake. That one song he said, while people are out partying, I'm trying to make music they can party to. Because while people was out partying, like the salespeople, because we work six days a week. But I felt like I work eight days a week. You know what I'm saying? Because we work Monday through Saturday and Sunday we is off. And Sunday, that's like club day. Like mm-hmm. people get to spend their money and they go out to the club and all that. But when they was out in the club, I was in my room writing down jokes and one-liners and goals and stuff. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I can prepare for the next week. And that's how I was able to like take over the whole like sales industry. You know what I'm saying? I had like 10 notebooks, no exaggeration of like one-liners, jokes, human interest stories, you know, product knowledge. You know, I had, and I was really? studying them, you know what I'm saying? And I'm listening to like, like I said, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Biggie Small. I'm looking at some, like I'm look, looking at their wordplay and some of their wordplay, I just switch it up and put it in my own words, you know what I'm saying? Oh, or watching like Looney Tunes or cartoons. Cause I'm seeing like, 
you learn so much stuff and you discover stuff too by listening to other people. You know what I'm saying? This is true. This is true. Yeah, so so how like, did you handle how do you handle rejection? Like when did that say I'm not scared of being I, rejected? I was cuz I grew up ugly. I was so used to girls rejecting me. I was like, Miss Jones can't got shit over these girls. Like, <laughs> like I was so ugly, I could get a fake phone number. So I knew that Miss Jones ain't had nothing on what I went through. You know what I'm saying? Like Fact. the sales influenced me and like really like like shot me from like Meek Mill says, Drake said to Meek Mill, zero to a hundred. Like, like <laughs> I went from uh, the ugliest person on earth to God gift the women. You know what I'm saying? Once I found my niche, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So that's how I dealt with it. I just I was like, I was so used to hearing no all the time that it wasn't nothing no more. It you know what I'm saying? It just, like, it just was like, God, yeah. well, God. And then I'm from Detroit. My mama always told me no. I asked her a thousand times. I went door to door because of my mama. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, she, exactly. Like every time I asked her, oh, I can't do it. I can't. You know what I'm saying? So I was so used to no. I said that. I know they ain't gonna tell me no. I see they money. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I know they ain't. I know they can't tell me no. Facts. So, so were you like so? So you going to these different neighborhoods? Was were there? How were you? Did you ever go through any like real bad neighborhoods? Like yeah. hoods? I'm writing like a whole TV show right now called Door to Door Chronicles, The Life of Kenny Brooks. Like, and it's basically telling like different stories. You know what I'm saying? Like I got one episode called The N Word. Like yeah. where I work post fall slash quarter lane, Idaho, where they didn't like black people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we knew it before we got there. Like every morning we have an eight o'clock meeting where we like see the eyes is a window to the soul. So we get the salespeople out the bed like seven o'clock, get them prepped and all motivated to go make some money. You know what I'm saying? But like, like I said, the eyes went up to the soul. Cause I got some people that just weren't interested. Like if Jesus came down with a tuxedo and tried to sell them, they, he, they wouldn't even buy from him. Mm. So I knew someone wouldn't go listen to me, but I'm motivating them because when I'm talking to them, I'm talking to myself. I'm still rallying up myself. Yeah, exactly. also, you know what I'm exactly, saying? My exactly. energy, I got to have my momentum up. Cause I know what these, these customers can do if I'm not ready. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like the saying, you got to stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. Exactly. So I used to just try to motivate them and at the same time, motivate me. But I already knew that they was racist, but I didn't want to tell my salespeople that. I faked it till I make it. I said, look, we about to go out here and kill them. Look, we ain't taking no for an answer. Look, just, hey, uh, you got to have a uh, selective hearing. You only want to hear two things. How much is it? It does it clean this. But they ain't talking like Jeezy said, if we ain't talking money, we speak in a different language. I'm talking like this to them. So we get out and we go to City Hall to go get licensed. And on our way to get licensed, my salespeople already then heard the message like, man, we in a racist town. You know, the KKK compound here. I said, OK, I'm a KKK, the cool color kid. That's what I'm about to tell them. <laughs> so I already had what I like, whatever they told me didn't affect me. I was trying to like elevate their thinking and make them think different because I knew that they can get swallowed in this neighborhood if they think the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, right. you know, what I'm saying, um, um, is, you know, like, uh, Money and negative people will never meet up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. And misery love company. So if you think in the wrong way, you're not going to succeed. You're not going to be successful. I show you somebody that's successful. I show you they went through adversity. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. tough times don't last. Tough people, tough people do. do. So I'm trying. I'm trying to explain this to them, but they didn't want to listen to me. So I had to lead by example. So I said, I'm gonna just show them better. I can tell them. You know what I'm saying? Because how my mentor told me, he said, I'm not gonna make you do nothing. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna throw you in the wolves, and I'm not gonna help you fight. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, I gotta be that same leader. So I'm trying to explain this to them, and they didn't want to listen to me. So what I did is that I went out there and I showed them. But the first door I knocked on. True story. The dude said, "Get off my porch, nigger." I said, "What well, that nigga? He owe me five dollars." They start busting out laughing. <laughs> dude bought a bottle. It's crazy, bro, because the dude didn't buy a bottle. Like he was impressed with my personality. He really bought because he was impressed with the product. He bought it because of the because of the product, right? Yeah. Well, that, but that's what I'm saying. What's crazy is that, like, I had selector hearing so bad that, like, if I would have been in Detroit. I already know that if he would have called me an N word, that Detroit would have came out. But I was so professional, you know what I'm saying? Because like they said, it ain't where you from, it's where you at. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I and I like people used to stereotype us all the time. Like you could take people, you know her all the same. You could take people from the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. They actually took the hood out of me. Once I knew, like my mentor used to say, when we in Rome, do as the Romans, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I knew that I had people watching me, you know what I'm saying? So I had to like be professional. So when he said that, the only thing I can think of was like, I got to shift this around. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. can't be ignorant like him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I had to think of something funny that not only made myself laugh, but I knew it was going to get him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So when he said, I said, what that nigga, he owe me $5. He's, as soon as he laughed, I said, 
you know, your whole shit, yeah, your whole this and watch this. I went over there and I cleaned the spot off his concrete. And he said, you know what? Oh, I like this. I like, I like. I'm, I'm gonna get a bottle of this nigger juice. He was like, do me a favor. He was like, put my bottle over there and go knock on my neighbor door. By the time you knock on my neighbor door, I'm gonna pick my bottle up and leave. How much is this 40? I'm gonna leave your 40 dollars right there. That's how I sold him. I didn't shake his hand and say, all right, you have a blessed day. It was thanks doing nice doing business with you. That's how I sold him. I went to his neighbor house and then I knocked on their door. And when I seen him pick up his product and left my money, I went back and got my money. That's how he bought. True story. So I'm what? going, I'm going, bro, I went to like nine, ten doors in a row. They calling me in words. Like, get off my porch. They, they weren't going for the, the other joke no more. Like, because I was using like, and they was just like, just slamming the door. Boom, boom. So I seen this little white kid. Like, I went to like the ninth or tenth door. I seen this little white girl outside. True story. I wrote this episode. It's called the N word. So I see this little white girl outside. I said, excuse me, excuse me. She was like, huh? I was like, can you tell your mommy there's a nigger at the door? <laughs> She read it. I was like, mommy, 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 there's a nigger at the door. Mom come outside. She see me. She was like, oh my gosh. She slapped her daughter like, why did you say that? I said, don't worry about it, mom. It's only $39.95. She was like, okay, I'll buy one. And she slapped her. And like, she was like, she was like, look, I, I felt bad because I'm like, dang, I just got this little girl slapped and they ain't even racist. I'm thinking that the whole town was racist exactly. just off of these people. She was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why she said that. We are not from here. I know the neighbors. I didn't heard about this town. We just moved here from Montana. I'm like, what? that's crazy like that's how that, I, that's how i know your perception is your reality like because if you really think that you know what i'm saying you can't judge a book by its cover you know what i mean right so mm -hmm. i say that to say this is that like what, what i was going through it was only temporary you know what i'm saying exactly. you can't make a permanent decision over temporary problems this is true because this like true. i really judged them off of how their neighborhood treated me you know what i'm saying when they probably was the nicest people in the neighborhood you know wow what I'm that's wow. like wow. Yeah. Talk about a so, life lesson. Yeah. So after that, like you know, what I'm saying like that. I, I like and like I got so many different episodes, like all the way to like when you were saying like, yeah, is that what happened with the uh, the um YouTube? No, I fast forward like all the way to 2009 or 10. I was just telling this because I got kidnapped by Indians to all the way to selling Jamie Fox to go on viral. Like that all happened and like. Hold on, you got kidnapped by Indians? Yeah, like Native Americans, not like Indians, like. Welcome to 7-Eleven. No, like, no, I'm you're talking like, about the Native American yeah, Indians yeah, kidnapped. What? Yeah. Ex please explain the story. Yeah, so, um, like I was telling, like, I don't know if I explained this, though, but, like, how we got paid when I was knocking on doors, like, selling the cleaner product, we got paid three different ways. We got paid off bets, bonuses, and commission. Like, we got commission. We went from a slide commission scale. You make 25 or 50%. The more sales you get, the more your commission go. You start right. off at 25%, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But you got to write, like, a lot of sales. You got to write, like, 100 sales by the end of the week to make 50%. So you got to average, like, 17 sales a day. You know what I mean? Just to, like, make 50%. Right. But if you make 17 sales a day, you're going to make, like, two to $3,000 a week. You know, if you write 100 sales. Exactly. Well, back in the day, it was, and you was making, like, 1500 probably, but... Like Sheesh. anyway, back then fifteen hundred is a lot. Yeah, 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 it was. So anyway, uh, I was like the top salesperson for a minute until this one day, this guy, <laughs> his name Chris Amon. Shout out to Chris Amon too, cause like he was the whole dynamic of how everything happened. If it wasn't for him, like coming in and talking crazy to me, like he had like forty some sales this day. He had like thirty some sales, and he had so many sales he gave another coworker like fifteen, twenty sales and still beat me. You know what I'm saying? But he came in bragging like, and this is how I know, because I'm like so humble as a salesperson. I barely talk, you know what I'm saying? Because like, killers move in silence. Like, I don't really say nothing. You don't know if I got one or 51, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm the same way if I got one, the same way as I have, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to take the good with the bad. So exactly. I'm always humble. I know that you can have a good day and you can have a bad day. So I ain't about to be all cocky when I have a good day, because I know I got to be the same way when I have a bad day too, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. He was the type of one that like, soon as he had a good day, he came in bragging like, what you had, Kenny? What you, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, oh, you must have had a good day because you never <laughs> talked to me, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, I just had, I forgot the sales that, that I know he had like 30 some or 40 some and he gave away like 15 sales, some crazy stuff. I was like, oh yeah, you beat me. I was like, cause I only had like 20 something. So anyway, and then he still was talking crazy. Like, yeah, I'll be kidding. You know what I'm saying? Like talking like they beat the best, you know what I'm saying? But he was like a top salesperson too. But at the time I was so consistent that I was running circles around these people. So anyway, to make a long story short, like I told you, we get paid off bets, bonuses and commission. So we get paid off a commission automatically. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. 
we get paid off of bets because we can bet the other salespeople and then they got bonuses that you win every day. Like the top salespeople try to win the most bonuses. You know what I'm saying? That's right. where your extra money insensitive came in. The uh, insensitive. I forgot what it's called. Incentives? It's, I forgot. I swear, I, I'm gonna mess it up, bro. I, like I'll be stuttering like Ruben, but it's, 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 I, I'm gonna I'm 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 remember it in a minute. But yeah, it's you know what I'm trying to say. It's like another word for bonuses. Uh -huh. But um, I bet in them. That was one of the ways. I was like, I bet you five hundred dollars. It was. I don't even know if I bet it that much. I think it was like hundred. I was like, I bet you a uh, friendly hundred dollars that I will go work the same neighborhood you work and I will double your sales. My crazy self thinking crazy like that. I like I because I used to write a lot of sales, but I was like on a I, I was thinking outside of the box right there. So anyway, they took me to the Indian reservation where he worked. But what's crazy is that because he he had like all of these sales and all of it was cash. Because one thing about the Indian reservation, they get paid like you know you know how they yeah, get all that yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they get paid cash. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, he was Indian. Come to find out, I didn't even know. I thought he was like Spanish or something. I, like I didn't find out he was Indian until like not too long ago. But anyway, so <laughs> I go to the same area that he went to. The first door I knocked on, dude come outside with a gun. Like, get off my property before I blow your head. I said, hey, Jesus didn't sell everybody. We're going to see you around like a donut. I walked off, right? <laughs> he didn't laugh, smirk, or nothing. He started following me with the gun. I'm like, oh, now back in the day, this is like 2009, 2010. They didn't have FaceTime, none of that back in the right, day. You right, know what right. I'm saying? I wish they did, but they he probably would have blew by, me in the forehead off. You know what I'm saying? Back he, that's how angry he was. He was like the angry bird. Anyway, so he following me with the gun. So I jump on the phone and call my manager. I said, look, Mr. Foster, look, I usually don't do this, but this dude is following me right now with a gun. He started laughing. He was like, bro, you were just in a meeting selling all the wolf tickets. You Kenny Brooks. I was like, I it ain't going to be no Kenny Brooks <laughs> if, if you don't get over here right now. This dude follow me with a gun. He said, bro, I'm like 15 minutes away from I got to drop the rest of your salespeople off, um, the rest of your coworkers off. He was like, I'm going to be there in like 10, 15 minutes as soon as I drop them off. I'm like, bro, what do you want me to do? Because he like, like you think I'm, I'm making this up so you can come. No, this dude really like he followed me with. He was like, look, when you get off the phone with me, if he's still following you, just call the police until I get there. So I'm like, bet. So I get off the phone. He turned around. I guess he must have thought I was already on the phone with the police. So he turned around and started going back to his house. So I see this school across the street from them. So I started walking towards the school because I seen kids out playing. Because I'm like, if he tries something else, I know he ain't about to smoke me in front of no kids. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, he got to right, be right. the craziest. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that deep. I ain't even do nothing to this dude. So as I'm walking towards the kids, I see this lady come outside and she hurry up and close her door. So I run back. When she closed, she only closed her screens, but they had the door, the screens like Friday, you know, like right, how, right. you could see, you know, out here, they got them screen doors, like where it's dark uh -huh. in the inside well, and can they see. can see. Yeah. So she had one of those. So I banged on her door, do, 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 like how them Jehovah's Witness did on Friday. I'm banging on her door. She come out. She was like, how can I help you? I was like, don't shoot just a chocolate kid. I didn't even know she was blind. She had her little stick. She's like, wait, wait a minute. Is you dark chocolate or light chocolate? I'm like, what the hell? Is this a chocolate contest? I said, I'm dark chocolate. She's like, you African-American? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, my God, what are you doing in this neighborhood? You do not supposed to be in this neighborhood. I'm surprised one of my nephews ain't tortured you. I'm like, what? She was like, yeah. They, she was like, they, um father just got murdered by african America two days ago, so they is beefing with the african American. Oh, my Because, you know, like, God. they got gangs out here. You know, they got MS-13s. They got, like, I, I knew this when I first got locked up out here for soliciting, and they had separated me. They put the browns with the browns. They put the white people with the white people. You know how it is. They, right, like, right. segregate everything. So, when she told me that, I just started thinking, like, damn, they got Indian gangs beefing with black people now. I thought we posted brown, brown and black posted. You know what I mean? Stick together, like, yeah. yeah. So, I'm like I, like, I don't know what I was thinking, but, like, I'm thinking, like, you know, this is crazy. So, when she told me that, I just thought, I was like, the first thing to ring to my head, like, I think I just ran into one of your nephews and just pulled his <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, she was like, she was like, come on in. She was like, she was like, what are, so, what are you, what are you doing? I was not, I got right back in sales mode. Like, I thought you never asked. You see the spot on your carpet? I just started like trying to pitch. I forgot that what she even told me. It just went right out the door. So I started pitching her. She's like, wait, wait. She was like, do me a favor. I was like, what? She was like, how many bottles you got in your bag? I was like, four. She was like, can you promise me one thing? If I buy these four bottles, can you call somebody to pick you up? I'll let you stay here till they come because I don't want nothing to happen to you because this is not a safe area where you at right now. And I'm thinking, like, I just had a salesperson come over here yesterday. And make over a thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. why they ain't do nothing to him? But I'm thinking, like, like I said, I thought he was like Spanish or something, you right. know what I'm saying? But I knew he wasn't black, and she said African, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's how I was thinking. So I'm like, I'm not about to just give up that quick. 
So anyway, I, I sold her the four bottles because that was a deal. And then I called my manager. I was just going to have them move me to the other side. I was like, bro, where you at? I, pick, I empty my bag now. And it's been way past 15 minutes. This lady just bought my bag. And she said that she ain't letting me leave her house till you come. He was like, I'm turning the corner right now. So I come out on the porch. I see him turning down the street. You feel me? So when he got like close, I came out the gate. I'm going to the van. I'm like, the van probably where that, you see that white wallet? Yeah. That's where the van at. And I'm coming out the gate. As soon as I come out the gate, they just come out of nowhere, like five or six Indians on four wheelers and bikes and everything. And they just drove up on me and like cut me off. I swear to God, as soon as they like did it, like cut me off in a circle, bro, he turned and went the other way. Like my, my yo, manager. Yo, manager yeah, left he went, you? Yeah, he like, I don't know if he, saw, like he just got up out of there, bro. So right when that happened, bro, I, I couldn't even think straight. I'm like, what is going so the dude jumped off the bike real quick he had like a machete like a little like he tried to swing it at me he was like you thought i was playing you think it's a game i'm about to he was like my brother about to pull up right now in the brown native proud truck you don't get in i'm a i'm a he was like i'm gonna blow your head off no he he had a gun and a knife i didn't see the gun i just know he said he gonna blow my head so the the brown truck pulled right up when he said that bro i was crying i was like in tears and i was like about to i swear to god i was really about to get in the truck like i was walk i was like with that camera i was walking like that close to the truck out of nowhere like a, a unmarked police car happened to just come out of nowhere like with the sirens like and they just start scattering like going different ways and they drove up to me and then by that time it was helicopters all type of stuff and i was like I, I asked the officer, I was in tears. He was like, are you okay? You okay? He's like, huh, get in real quick. And he started calling back up so they could find him because they just scattered. Like, they knew they area, you know what I'm saying? Because they start going in ditches and, and like, like, huh, like they, right, they right, knew right. where they was going, you know what I'm saying? Right. They couldn't really fight, chase them because it was on him by himself. He called back up. They had helicopters and everything. Bro, this happened like at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. They didn't find these guys to like 6 or 7 o'clock at night. That's how long it took for them to find them. So they finally found them and stuff. And um, I, the police was doing like a police report asking me what happened. And I explained to him and I was like, did somebody um call you? Because I'm thinking like either the lady that I sold or them kids, like I told you, I was by school. They had called him and told him that something was going on. They was like, no. Nah. They was like, you know what's crazy? They was like, that's an um, Indian gang. And it, we happen to monitor this area because it's been like a lot of crime and a lot of like kidnapping and attempted murder been happening in these last couple of days. They're like, so you really lucky, like. God was on your side. That's exactly Whoa. that's exactly how he told me. So, like around like seven thirty, eight o'clock, he took me to the the uh, the uh, jail to point them out. You know what I'm saying? But I don't remember. All, I just remember like two dudes. I remember the dude that pulled up in the truck, and I remember the dude that pulled out the uh, machete on me and a gun. And I I believe they was brothers because when I pointed him out, he's like, you know who that is? I forgot their name. He's like, them they brothers. They the uh, he told me they was like they got like a long rap street of crime and stuff today, and they was like wanted for like a whole bunch of stuff. So I was like, dang, they really was like they, they was they about really, to do it. Yeah, they was about to try to do do, do some crazy. You know what I mean? Oh so, my god! So that's so a danger. This happened like in November. It was either like October or November, of like two thousand nine, bro. I remember it like yesterday. So look, after that happened. My van outside waiting for me because, of course, they had to pick me up from when this happened. They out there waiting on me. I get to the van. I'm snapping. I'm like, I can't believe y'all just left me out here, threw me to the woods for me to die. Like, y'all left me here, y'all. So so <laughs> I'm out here selling y'all cleaning product. Y'all going to leave me out here. Like, right. That's I'm cold business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, I quit. I'm not working for y'all no more. I was like, man, y'all can send me home. Give me a ticket. Boom. So they give me a ticket back home. So I'm in Detroit now. I'm in Detroit. Nah, like two, three months go by. This like January, February, twenty ten. They sent me a letter in the mail, to, a subpoena, where I had to go back to California to testify against them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that was in California. Yeah, this happened in California. It happened what in part? Temecula, like, to San Diego ish area. No, Temecula. Temecula. I know yeah, that's yeah. after fifteen. It's, yeah, 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 it's going that towards that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By Encinito, Encinito, all that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they sent me a subpoena in the mail to testify to right. So boom. I had to fly out to California. This like two, three months later. So, boom. I'm thinking I'm safe because as soon as I get to the airport, I get off the plane. It's a dude with a suit on with a Bluetooth. He like he worked for Obama or George Bush or something. He, <laughs> right, had, right. he had a sign saying Kenny Brooks. I'm like, oh shit, they got like they they high class. You know what I'm saying? They got secret agents picking me up. You know what I'm saying? They had like a bulletproof. I ain't gonna say bulletproof, but they had like an all black tenant like uh. 
suburban, you know what I'm saying? That was tinted, like you could see. So they had, they picked me up like that. Then they took me to like a hotel. They had people watching me and monitoring me. It was like I was on a witness protection. I was like, the <laughs> I was like the new six nine. Like I was like six nine how he is right now. That's how I was like back in the day. I like and it wasn't for it wasn't for snitching. It was for me protecting myself. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, it was right, like right. they that like they knew something that I didn't know. So anyway, they took me to the courtroom, boom, boom. I was like, all right, I gotta use the restroom real quick. So I go through the meta detector, go through the uh um the security and everything. Go upstairs. It's in the courthouse? Yeah. I oh. go upstairs, right? So when I go upstairs to go use the restroom, boom. I walk right in the bathroom. This big Indian dude, he coming out. He said, hey, you motherfucker. And he went like this. Like He went like, bro, I looked at him, <laughs> turned around, took the fuck. I, I got up out of there. I ran past. What's crazy is that it was two dudes, two big dudes standing outside the bathroom that escorted me to the bathroom. They was waiting on me. When he did that, I ran past them. I was like, I just started tripping. I was like, hey, somebody trying to kill. I just ran. Bro, they... <laughs> When I ran past them, they was looking lost, like, what is going on? I don't even know where the dude went, but I ran down the stairs, ran through the metal detector, ran past security, ran up out that mud, and I didn't even look back. I didn't even see if he was looking for me or not. And I ran to, like, a gas station, like, a half a mile. And I went in there, like, can I use your phone? Boom. Then they let me use the phone. I ended up calling my mom. I was like, you got to give me a ticket back home. I told you this was a setup. Because I didn't even want to leave in the first place. I never heard of right. subpoena and all. She's like, no, you got to go. You, if you don't testify, they can, you can go to jail and all this crazy stuff. So anyway, when that happened, I ran, like, all the way far, like, at least, like, a half a mile to the gas station. I called her. I was like, look. You why ran you got out the courthouse. Yeah, to a gas station, and the, the the people that were escorting you didn't follow behind you. No, that's what I'm saying. They they was trying to figure out what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if they arrested the dude or not because like I still don't know to this day whatever happened to that because this is what I'm getting to. This is what happened after that. So boom, I ran past them. Boom, they blowing like they they. I didn't have no phone at the oh time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my mother like calling them to find out what's going on, but. She said she couldn't give me no money to get home. She didn't have it at the time because I'm in California. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you got to help me get home. She's like, you need to call the company or call on people you with. I'm like, I'm not calling them. They going to, you know what I'm saying? It's a setup. So, yeah. So I was like, I'm going to call the company. So I called the company. I was like, um, I know I quit, but <laughs> I'm in California. I need y'all right now. I'm stranded. I need to get back home. They was like. Oh no, no. You 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 quit on this. Look, I said it don't matter. I was working for y'all for like five years straight, top salesperson. I never took one day off a of vacation, none of that. You know what I'm saying? You can't get me home in hard times. I need y'all right now. So anyway, they was like, all right, let me call you right back. I'm like, how you gonna call me back? I don't got no phone. They was like, all right, call us back in five minutes. We're gonna talk to the owner of the company. So I called them back and they was like, all right, yeah, they said we could pay your way. We we on our way. So I'm waiting at the gas station for like 30, 40 minutes. I guess they had to drive like 30, 40 minutes to pick me up. So when they finally picked me up, they had this whole little story put together. They had the owner on the phone and everything. They went from paying for my way to dropping me off to like, okay, well, um, we got change of plans. We got two things. The owner on the phone right now, he can explain to you. He said you could do one or two things. He said we could take you to the Greyhound right now and we could pay for your ticket. It's like two ninety eight, dollars and we'll just pay for your ticket. Or you can go door to door Today, we'll put you in a safe neighborhood and you can make commission and we can use your commission to pay half of your ticket for a flight because your flight from Detroit to California is like 600 bucks. And at first I was about to just do that, just catch right. the Greyhound. But when I found out that it took me, it was going to take me three more days to get home. Like it, it was, was the like, first nah, time. Nah. And I had to wait there for like 14 hours. Because right. it was like early in the morning, you know, you gotta go yeah, to court you gotta, like at eight yeah, o'clock. Exactly. And I, I wasn't flying, I wasn't catching the bus until like at like eight o'clock at night. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was like twelve hours. And I'm thinking like in the back of my mind, like they probably can come and find me. You know what I'm saying? And if they it, just found me in a bathroom, do you, you know what I'm saying? This they city, exactly. yeah, they know something. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't want a chance. And I said, you know what? All right, I'm gonna go with y'all. Boom. So they took me to Tarzana. Boom. Dropped me off in like a nice neighborhood. So I'm knocking, boom, boom. I got like one or two sales. So I knock on this one dude door, like an older dude. So I beat the brakes off him real quick. He was like, he was like, um, he was like, I got this spot. If it clean the spot, I'll buy. He had like some on his tile grout. It was like bleached or something. He said he used like a carpet clean. He said he used like a chemical cleaner on it. I think he said like a carpet cleaner or something, the wrong cleaner, and it bleached like his tile. But I end up I, while I was cleaning it, I looked up. He had, you know how they had pictures of in their house and stuff. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. He had a picture with Kobe. He had a picture with like Shaq, Magic Johnson. 
I was like, you must be a doctor. He was like, yeah, how did you know that? I was like, because you got a lot of patience. And then he started laughing. He was like, oh, I like that, I like that. He's like, yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm the Laker doctor. He like, he basically was like the doctor for the Lakers. Like when they get injured really? and stuff, he like do like they physicals and all that, right. So like he bought two bottles real quick. He was like, oh, you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy? I was like, yeah, that's this, this the vehicle that's driving me to my success. I was like, this is how I pay for my acting classes. He's like, you know Jamie Foxx there across the street, right? I'm like, what? Now look, this this is like no exaggeration. This is like right after like all of this just happened, bro. I, as soon as he told me that, I forgot I even sold this. Now I left my cleaner, my bag, and everything. I ran. I was like a group. Y'all hurry up and ran over there. I was like, man, I gotta meet him. Like he gotta hear this. Like you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I right, run right. all the way over there to his house. Right. So when I get to his house, I noticed that he had a gate. Like so, I'm, I'm pressing the gate and everything. Nobody answering. So I'm going to the next house. The next house is that lady that filmed me. Remember the video that everybody seen the, when yeah. I was on a piece yeah. of the porch and they, that was the neighbor. So look, before I get to, I'm going to that house. Like I'm right in front of that house. As soon as I get to that house, this is like 2009 or 10. I see a brown, the old Maybachs, like the brown. Remember how it was two-tone? It was yeah, like exactly. light brown, dark brown. I seen that pulling in the gate. I'm like, oh, shit, this is really Jamie Foxx. So I run back over there. So by the time I get over there, the gate was closing. But he got one of those gates, like the body sensor. Like, you know, like the gate closed. And it come, one, open, it back come open back up once your body sensor hit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he had one of those. So while, while the gate opening back up, I'm walking in, and he started talking. on He's like, wait, 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 no trespassing. No tr I'm like, dang, he can see me. And I was like, COD? He was like, all right, one second. So the gate started closing. So I backed up and waited till he went in his garage, parked, and he came back like on a golf cart. You know what I'm saying? So he dropped. And I'm like, dang, it's really Jamie Foxx. And this dude has some big ears in real life. Like he is just, was just hate. So I'm like, I'm like, oh. So look, when he came up, he got like about like right with that camera at. And he was like, wait, 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 wait. He saw, I guess he must have seen my spray bottle or something. He's like, wait, wait, wait. You trying to sell, sell me something? He was like, no, 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 no. He was like, no, we don't want nothing. He was like, I thought you said COD. I was like, yeah, come on down. And then he started <laughs> laughing. He was like, oh, not only is you funny, you funny looking. Then he started talking about my teeth and stuff. He was like, he just started roasting me. I swear to God, I forgot the jokes that he said. But we started roasting. Like, that's how I met him. We started joning on each other for like the first five minutes. And then he just was like, you know what? I like you. You remind me of myself. He just started telling me how I used to be a shoe salesman and like how he got adopted. He was from this small town like Terrell, Texas, something like how his real name ain't Jamie. And how like he just started telling me his whole life story. He introduced me to a stepdad and like he had like a guest house in the back and he introduced to me a stepdad. And he was like, he was like um, on break. He was filming that movie, The Django. Remember that movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. this is like this is how long ago it was. And he was like, man, you lucky you caught me and everything. So he ended up like buying a bottle and then, uh, Right when that happened, I just started like a tear drop. I was like, man, you just don't know how blessed it is to meet you because I wasn't even supposed to meet you today. I was like, right before I knocked on your door, you you don't even know what I've been through today. I was like, I had got kidnapped by some Indians. He was like, what were you doing at 7-Eleven? He like tried to joke about it and everything. And I was like, and like, nah, I'm here like like talking to you now. And then like he ended up buying and then because he said he had to go back to from break because he was like on this break, you know what I'm saying? So he ended up buying. And the next door, that's when the lady came out. And I was like, I'm be quick like Nestle. Be like, wow. So, like, look, what's crazy is that that whole transition changed my life. Because that one video, like, made me the person I am today. And it took, and, like, I had to I had to go through, like, not giving up. Still, you know what I mean? Like, right. getting my job back, getting dropped off. In the, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly, exactly. And, like, it's crazy because, like, how I told him, like, I reached back out to him, like, three, four years ago, right? Like, this after I went viral. Like, because I didn't find out my video went super duper viral to, like, 2016, 2017 when, like, Ridiculousness, you know that show on mm -hmm. TV? They had, like, sent me an email, like, they wanted to use my video on a show, but they already had, like, paid the lady some money for the video. And then I have found out, like, that... She was monetizing it. Yeah, all that on without YouTube me, you know what I'm that? saying. And then she ended up taking the whole video down. And it had like over like 200 million views. So I know she was already making money off the video. Oh she got mad and just took God. the whole video down. But yeah, like so that's how that even happened. That whole situation was like, it was just crazy. Like, cause dang, so so oh my God, so you went from being kidnapped, having to go to court, testify, ran out of court, old oh uh uh uh, uh boss picks you up, takes you to a random neighborhood in Tarzan. It happens to be a Laker coach, Laker doctor. He tells you, Cross Street's Jamie Foxx. You say, oh, you know what? Jamie Foxx ain't here. Let me go to the 
uh, this lady's house. She films you. You go yeah. viral from the video she films on YouTube. Then you see Jamie Foxx. No, no, no. I, I, oh, you went back no, to I, her. I, I went to her house first, but I didn't get a chance to go to her because when I was going to her house, that Maybach pulled up. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine if I would have went to the house first. Right. She it probably wouldn't have happened like that. You know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. It was like timing, like everything happened for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So you reached back out to Jamie Foxx and, and what happened? Yeah, and I was like, Man, I just want to thank you for calling your neighbor, putting me on YouTube and all that. He was like, Let me tell you how racist my neighbors is. That's why I had to move out of because he moved from there to like Thousand Oaks, like years later. He don't even stand in the neighborhood no more. He was like, My neighbor called me and said you was trying to break into people's houses. Cause you know, like what? They be having like neighborhood watching neighbor. Like she only recorded me because she thought that I was casing the neighborhood. She didn't think that. Like I'm thinking this whole time because it was like a coincidence. I'm like, he telling me how he used to be a shoe salesman and how all of this happened. Like how he caught because he told me how he caught his big break. He said he remember one time he um was trying to sell the guy from a living color like some shoes and he didn't buy from him. And then he said you should be doing something better and and he gave him a job to do a. Uh, audition for a living color you know what i'm saying right so that he was telling me how he got his break and how he he used to go to auditions to like open mics and he used to write jamie down because they used to pick females first you know what i'm saying his real name oh jamie, my you god know i saying? ain't know that yeah so like he was just telling me all these stories and i'm looking at like right after this happened this lady record me and i go super viral you know what i'm saying after right. i meet him i'm thinking like he must have called her and said look open this Open your door and get the camcorder and record this dude. He's hilarious and he about to get his big break. You know what I'm saying? But it was the other way. But it around. was the other way around. She only came to the door because she thought that if the neighbor said I broke in their house, she had me on film. Like yeah, why you think she zoomed in on my back? Like what's your name? Kenny Brooks. And then remember I was like, you you don't see me on TV. Right, right, and right. She zoomed all the way in. Like so he told me like the lady only came to the door because she called him and said Jamie. Yeah, it's a black kid. He's casing the neighborhood like he was trying to break in. He's like, no, he's not. He's a businessman. I just bought some of his product. You should open the door and listen. He's very interested. And that's how that happened. Wow. Wow. And then that's probably why she had no problem taking the 200 million view video down. Yeah. She knew what she, she already was doing. made all her, you know what She I'm made the bread and yeah. she's trying to take away from the fame and the numbers on yeah. that. But she said that too. Like when we, I could show you Facebook's message. She was like, I made you. Like, because I was tripping. I was like, you making all this. She was like, Bro, it was crazy, bro. She said she God. made you. Yeah, she. I swear she said that. Like, cause I, I like, I, I was, I, I wouldn't. What got did a she do for a living? Do you know what she did for a living? No, she was just like Somebody She was just robot. into filming like cats and stuff. But I, I told her like I even told ridiculousness because she had like the production, like the, the executive producer of the production company reach out to me right. And she was like, yeah. She was like rushing me to sign the like uh the consent. The paper. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. they can play because they already offered her money. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I'm like, I'm not signing this. They trying to give me $150 and three tickets. And they didn't give you like $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 because it's oh, your video for nah. the copyrights. I'm not doing that. You think I'm a slave or something? So she was like, she was like, I made, she just was tripping, bro. Me, I made you. I ain't even get that much money and all that. So when I went and got my uh, lawyer to contact her because I was trying to sue her. Uh -huh. I wasn't even really going to sue her. I just wanted him to talk to her and try to see if she could work out and tell him the truth, how much she got, and she could split it with me. And she was like, she didn't make no money. And she was like, uh. She lying. Yeah. And I'm like, she telling me she doing movie roles. She done did a movie with Charles Bronson, and she got other stuff going. I'm like, when I first met you, you was taking pictures of cats. Now <laughs> you doing big movies now, and you got a whole, like. And I, and, I, and I told Ridiculousness, I said, look, why would y'all give her all this money and then offer me a little bit of money? And you could tell that her channel is not doing good because of her channel. It's because of you. She got one video on there that got 200 some million views. All her other videos got like 39 views, 147 views, 600 views. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So y'all do the math. Y'all know like. Now, now we fast forward Jamie Foxx. Yeah. So. You, you have you had the chance to work with him or anything or how how was that yeah we we working on like today i seen him like twice uh-huh but like it was like in and out but like <laughs> he like i we like it was so business like i first of all i was like kind of late today so like oh, we man. really ain't even get a chance to chop it up me i ain't even get a chance to really chop it up with him or like king botch really like uh-huh they was like in and out, you know what I'm yeah, saying? The movie like, sets, man, be yeah, busy. Yeah. Right and then fast. you can't really have phones. Like, I had to sneak and do, like, little, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. Yeah, it'd be like, yeah, so. 
Dang, that's what's up, bro. So, do you ever see yourself starting your own product or or or, or, or hiring? Yeah, things? I had I had my own product called Do It Fluid. It was my own brand. It was basically Do It Fluid. What is that? It's a a all purpose cleaner. Hey, you know it's crazy bourbon because of that. That that's um I gave you some carbonated water, but it's flavored. It tastes like soda though, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Zero yeah. calories, zero everything. Yeah, it's that, fire. It's, yeah, it's it's super good. <laughs> that's all I was, I was just saying. I didn't burp like three times. <laughs> that's like, that, that's that, that, uh, it's crazy. Gave. You ain't the only one burping. I'm like, okay, cool. I I be burping like that. I'm like, man, something wrong with me every time I drink this. I be burping. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, it's yeah. The, the carbonated water and all that. Yeah, it was good. Dang, that's crazy. That's carbonated. That was my first time drinking carbonated water. I ain't even like carbonated water at first. That's that, crazy ass that, fire. You just, you just, I don't hey, never tell just, nobody. Hey, you know some yeah, yeah, you <laughs> just tricked the shit out. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny thing you just said. I'm like, dang, he got me. I was like, I don't could. Well, I just try to drink a lot of uh, carbonated water. It was just nasty. That was sometimes oh, I'll be telling you, like, you want some get... carbonated water? <laughs> some carbonated water. Say no. like, Hell no. I don't know. Like, it's good, though. Right. I was I'm like, straight. You know, as soon as I drank it, I was like, you gave me some strawberry Sprite. <laughs> like, I thought I had some new strawberry Sprite. I saw a strawberry out there, too. I'm like, okay. We in there like Swimwear. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I got my brand. Like, I, I'm still, like, it's like I had to start all over. Like, after all of that happened with the lady and stuff, I, like, started from ground zero. I monetized everything. I went and got TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Facebook, Snapchat. I started like I just was on every social media platform. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Trying to monetize, build my brand. So like I I've been working with like different teams, like trying to like it's like just so hard. You know, like being in Hollywood and right, like, man. Oh you don't God. know who to trust. There's so many people that it's like so you know everybody what I'm is they, the top honcho. Yeah, yeah right. they trying to trick you, like you know what I mean, or they try to use and abuse you. So I'm like a one man army. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like so, but I had my do it fluid, and then that it was it, it didn't go so good. I had like business partners that like we didn't work out, so that didn't work. I still got that, but I ain't even claiming it right now because it's like we going through like legal issues and everything with uh -huh. that. And then um, I had I, I'm I'm in partnership with Pink Miracle. That's what you've been seeing me right. like promote because like that's like I got equity in that. You know what I'm saying and. Shout out to Pink Miracle because they've been showing love and we got a big deal on the table. Like we supposed to be like, uh, I really can't talk about it because I don't know for sure, for sure. But we got like some big things coming up. Like we're like we probably about to get like a big deal, like probably like with Foot Locker or somebody. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 might work out. And then um, I got my merch line, Funny Salesman, and then I got my sales training course. You know what I mean? So. Solid, solid. Yeah. So, so as far as monetizing and, and content now, so what are you doing as far as that? Like, are you, you with the new character? Like, are you are you uh, focusing on movie roles or just building your brand? Yeah, I'm just building my brand. Like, cause like at the end of the day, whatever that can help me f support me and my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I got a wife now. I got ten kids. You know what I'm ten, saying? So, ten like, kids. Yeah. So. Well, how's your oldest? Um, she's 16. Okay. Yeah, I got a 16 year old. You had a kid what, 16, 17? Huh? You had a kid at 16, 17? Uh, 22. That was the first. Okay, so question for you. What? Was that your driving force? Like when you were doing all the sales and stuff? Like, yeah. man, how many how many kids were you at? What? 2006 or seven? Was that three kids or something? No, 2006. Dang. Yeah, 2006. That's crazy. I had my daughter. At 2006. No, 2005. Then I had my son. 2006. Uh, you, that, so that was like, yo, I, I know, I just can't. Yeah. Just, Cause know, I came in like at 2005, and then mm -hmm. 2006 I had a kid. You know what I'm saying? So how did the kid? When did the kids just keep coming? Cause it was one year, I know they had to be like, oh yeah. damn, back, I had back, 2000, back, back Yeah, it was like 2006, two, 2005, 2006. Then I took 2007 off, then I had the 2008, 2009, took 2010 and 11 off, then I had to begin like 2014 and 15, and then 2017. All about the same? No, I got five I know. baby mamas. I know, I know. Like, yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I got, I got four baby mamas and one wife. I can't keep saying that. Shout out to Jasmine, too. That's my so wife. So, you know what's we crazy? What I, what I was just looking at Country Wayne. He has the same amount of kids. I want to say like nine or ten also. 
And he said that was his driving force to get to the next level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it, like, it is. Like, it's like a package deal. I heard I heard Jay-Z said on Family Feud, he said a man can't take care of himself till he take care of his family. You know what I mean? Right, right. Jay-Z's on Family Feud before? No, Family Feud, the song. Oh, the song. I'm about yeah. to say, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, Jay-Z? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me get a... Yeah, that was like, I felt like a lot of my struggles came from like, I, I didn't pit my most important people in my life first and that was like my kids you know uh-huh. what i mean right like in sales it's a jealous business so like i took too much it's like as soon as i got my wife i found out that i had two more kids that's 13 i haven't been there like i didn't even know like i like i'm just not like spending time with them and knowing them but like i that's how I like that's how like i say selfish i was at the time you know what i mean uh-huh Cause I I was just like sell 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 sell. It was work first. Huh? Yeah, work 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 work. But it was like I, I wasn't working to support them. I was just selfish. Like this all me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm barely spending time with. I'm talking. About, they like they didn't even know who I was. They knew who I was, but I didn't know who they was. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, like right, I had right, to take right. a blood test and one. So it's like it's a complete package deal. Like now I got all of my kids. I know my kids. They in my life. I'm spending time with them. Like people be seeing like on my Instagram, they be like, dang, he was his kids practice basketball. I wasn't doing that at first. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I felt like once I found myself and just like, I like it's like my, I, I, I'm trying to complete like everything in my world. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the energy that it get, like being able to be there for your kids, that kind of, it's like a different driving factor for like, you know, like, because yeah. cause even with me, like my son, my daughter's like, it's like when I'm there at the football games and the practices and stuff like that, when I leave there and I go back to my grind of DJing or whatever it is I'm doing, I feel better about it rather yeah. than just having on the back yeah. of my mind, like yeah. I'm grinding, 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 yeah. but I ain't spending no time yeah, seeing them exactly. like that. Cause it's like this guilt. Yeah, it's like that why. Like this right. is that why. This is why I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? First then, is that like, I ain't trying to cut you off because I know yeah. you're probably about to say something powerful. But that that was that was my why, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like back in the day, my why was like, well, why I'm waking up? Oh, cause I don't want to be broke. But then I'm like, but I got responsibilities, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then unfortunately, like I'm I'm fortunate because I only have one of like my mother and my kids that put me on child support, cause they all could have did it, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, like right. I like out of all my kids, I think I only took care of like the, my two oldest the most out of all of them. Uh-huh. Like now I'm like taking care of, like I, I I probably can't make every game every, you know what I'm saying? But it just feel good when like you can be there. Cause like what really hurt me the most is that I didn't know my kids favorite food, their favorite color, you know what I'm saying? What they like, what they dislike, you know what I mean? They didn't even know that about me. They didn't know I had heart problems. They didn't know that I don't eat pork. You know, it was certain stuff that they didn't know. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And I was like, dang, now they know this. You know what I'm saying? Your kid's supposed to know this. You're supposed to know this about your mom. You know what I'm saying? You're right. supposed to know this about your dad. You know what I right, mean? Right, exactly. Yeah, like, because yeah. I'm like, I bet you you know your mama favorite color. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've right. been around your mom. I bet you you know what your mama dislike. I bet you your mama know your, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, it wasn't even a competition with me. Cause like, like, I, like I, I heard this a lot. Like you don't want no pat on the back for taking care of your kids. You supposed to do that. It's just to. that, it's just that. And that's how I, like, I'm learning like fatherhood more than more. It was before Kevin Hart came out with that movie. It's just that, it's just, it puts you in a position to make you even grind even more. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Look forward to something. You know what it I'm saying? It makes the grind a little easier. Yeah, exactly. Because you know the end, you know, the end goes, my kids yeah. going to be able to, you know, they're going to yeah. profit off of this. They're going to be able to see their father, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. in films or whatever yeah. it may be. And it's, and you know, I, I don't want them to grow up how I grew up. That's the, my whole goal. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? I don't want them to come up how I came up. And then I want to give them something that I didn't have because I grew up without a father. I know how it was for my mama to raise all these kids by herself. You know what I'm saying? You got so, me brothers and sisters. Um, it's seven. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. My bad, I'm yawning and shoving. It's actually six. Yep, six. Technically, it's six. My mama, she had raised uh, one of my um. She raised in two. She didn't raise like you know how. So anybody else come to California with you, or no? You're the only one that came. Yeah, just me. Wow. So you know, California like a big city to a lot of people. That's like Midwest and all that. Like, oh, you in L.A. Especially L.A. You know what I'm saying? It's like this shit is like big to some people. And it's like, what the fuck? Exactly. Doing your thing, and then to run into Jamie Foxx, it's like, yo, everybody running into somebody from Hollywood. No, the, the chances of that stuff happening, bro, is really slim. 
if you really think about it, to pull up at somebody's house as they're driving in, that's that powerful, an A-list celebrity? Yeah. Filming a major movie? Like, come on, bro. Like, the cars is in your favor. Right. Cars is definitely in your favor, man. So what, so, so what is your, if you were to say, this is my end goal, because no one really chooses their end goal, and at the same time, you never know when it's happening or while it's happening. Right. It just happens. You know what I'm saying? So if you were to say, like, what is it? I want to do or be known for is it stand up comedy? Is it movies? The TV shows? Like, what would it? What would it be? Um, yeah, like big films. Like, my my whole goal is to like to get this TV show that I've been writing for like five years off the ground because I feel like once people really know my story, because like a podcast, this this is a story alone. Once I can turn this into a movie to where I can inspire other people and let them know, like, this was my journey. Right. So don't stop on yours. You know what I mean? Right. Because if I made it as a door-to-door salesman, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I done met so many influencers, like, and I tell them all the time, like, I went viral on an accident. I didn't ask for this. You know what I'm saying? I bump, I was really doing a job. Like, y'all was doing Vine. Y'all was doing Instagram. Y'all was doing this. Y'all was trying to make videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just, I just bumped into that. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Like, I didn't say, I didn't knock on a lady. Like, people, I sort of got every time people say, like, I done met so many people that, like, big, like, and they be like, man, did you knock on that door and you set that up? No, I knocked on the door and that, that lights, camera, action. Like Mr. Cheeks, no. like, man. I remember it was two guys. It was a, one with two guys. You knocked on their door, and that went viral. Uh, another time, I seen that with a crazy amount of views, and I was like, "That was that set up?" Or how like, which, hey. which one? It was like two dudes at the at the the one with the tattoos the, on his face and all that. Ah, oh, it's so many of them, bro. It was one you just he, he walked to the door, and his and his friend was filming or something like that, and he just knocked on it. And he was at the he was like at the window, and then one's at the door. He's like, get your camera ready, get your camera ready. Here he goes. <laughs> oh, it's so many. Man. I, I'm like, yo, it was. It's just, but it's like those videos you watch and you just look at it like, yo, how? Yeah. How? How? You know what I'm saying? Do you plan on doing stand up comedy? Yeah, I tried. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's I, I, only reason why I want to redeem myself because it's what like, happened. No, I tried it, but I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give it a not a lot of time. It's like it was one of those things. Like I really. I, I, I can't really use an excuse on that. It's just that, like, I really didn't give it my best. I kind of, like, gave up, like, soon as I got... Because I tried it out, but I only tried it out for, like, six months. You know what I'm saying? That's it? I, that's all I did it for. I, I even, like, I was just telling King Botch, like, I was there with him when, when they had Marty's over here on Sunset. We used mm-hmm. to go to Marty's with, like, Damon Wayne's Jr. and, like, uh, King Botch and um Jahan Jones like a lot of like influencers they used to go there we used to work on our material but I didn't been all the way to like flappers to haha haha comedy club to comedy uh comedy store to laugh factory I didn't but I really never gave it my best to like perfect my material you know what I'm saying Uh because I was still like getting trained on how to deliver my comedy you know what I'm saying because like my type of comedy it's like different from other comedy because like a lot of people do storytelling and I'm just not finding out like if I did more storytelling, then I would have been like kind of good at comedy. Uh. I was the type of one that talk real fast and like, so they ain't catching the first or the second joke. I'm on the eighth joke now. You know what I'm saying? And they just like, oh, yeah. 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 And they like, it be going over their head. I just had a comedy show in Detroit, like probably like in five months ago with like Brandon T. Jackson. And he even said the same thing. He was like, bro. You got funny jokes, but you just talk too fast. So, like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, slow it down. Yeah, slow a it down. Bit. And they like experience with comedy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like so many people. Like, and I could tell because I wouldn't get in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And this was like in Detroit. They like hard, like, they super hard to uh, impress them. Facts. Like, they got that, that cold yeah, audience. Like, right? they laughing. Like, you got to put a gun up to their head for them to laugh. Laugh, nigga. Like, you're like, <laughs> they, like, they ain't really going, you know what I'm saying? They, they tough as hell. Like, they laugh. They, they, like, I swear to God, it was just crazy. Like, yeah, so. Dang. Like, Dang. So, it's like, like, was that humbling? Yeah. Or, or was that like a driving, like, like no. I'm get this together. Yeah, so that's what out. that's what I'm saying. Like, that that's, that's the only thing that really, like, got me together. Because every other obstacle, I Yo. overcame it. Right, right, except right. Except for stand-up comedy. So, that's on my bucket list that I gotta go back to stand up. It's just that I got so much stuff going How on. How did you master acting then? 
Huh? Because acting is a little hard too. Yeah, but like I think when somebody, when you got this gift, you know what I'm saying? Like my gift was acting, making people laugh. You know what I'm saying? Some people, like everybody can't do stand up comedy. You know what I mean? Y'all in this shit, now. I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. I know we, we need a red bull or so. Facts, right? Yeah, but right. like everybody, that's how I feel like everybody can't do stand up comedy. You know, what I'm saying? you got no, you got different of type not. of comedians too. You know what I'm saying? Because you got some comedians that's hilarious, hilarious, but then they get on that stage and it's like, yeah. I thought everybody that's funny that can get on stage and do and stand up. It's really yeah. not like I just want to do my homework just to prove my fans, like like at least like let them know, like look, I ain't give up. Right, Y'all right, been right. Rocking with me since day one, but I noticed I've been look. I got one video on there. It got like that's the most views I got on my stand up. It got like two hundred and thirty k, and like it got like a lot of comments. It got like four hundred comments, and I, I I swear I read at least like a hundred of them. It was like he feel miserably <laughs> like this, like he feel like like it was crazy. I was like, oh yeah, I got I got I got to redeem that redemption. That redemption day is coming, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like one of my goals. Like I was like, yeah, I got I got to um, get back into my comedy. It's just that like, and I, like I, I'm gonna definitely do it. Is, your, is really, your wife is your wife at your shows with you? Yeah, she done been to a couple of them. Yeah. She definitely support, and she would tell me too, like, yeah, you should. Yeah, you was nervous right here. You, I still be getting that stage too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get, that's how you know. That's how I know. That's how I know that I ain't really like all the way like confident. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like nerve. she was, she was like, if I put a bottle in your hand, you gonna go ham and sell that. But as soon as you up there trying to crack, because it's different. Because like when I'm just like trying to make people laugh, like trying to sell them something. I'm feeding off of their energy, you know what I'm saying? True. Because I'm yeah. going off of their rebuttals and their energy and how they is. Would just stand up like they just quiet like. All right, go ahead, nigga. Like you know, what I'm saying? and they, they come to ready to laugh, and they like, yeah. "Dang, making me laugh." Yeah. Dang, yeah. wasn't funny. Yeah. Dang, make like me laugh. Like I told the Jamie Foxx story, they didn't even laugh. I'm like, "Wow, that one of you." I swear to God. So I was like, "Damn, I got it." Okay, I should have told the N word joke. The N word. If I would have told that, they would have been laughing. You know what I mean? Like, right, 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 right. Because it was too long. You know what I'm saying? They're like, "This ain't even funny." You know what I'm saying? You should have got to the part where y'all was roasting each other. That would have been funny. But you went to a limo and it, like you went like they they was not laughing. But I and that's when when I had um I went to the comedy store and I talked to like Paulie Shore. Shout out to Paulie Shore. I talked to him for like an hour and a half and he was just telling me like it's levels to comedy. You know what Facts. I'm saying? You gotta know. How to read your crowd? You gotta know when it, he was like. If he was like, if you get like a little boring stage when you get dry, start roasting the heckler. He, he was like, he was like, just start roasting the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was like, cause sometimes you gotta get the crowd involved. He was like, but don't just stand there and just like, you know what I mean? Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite stand up comedian? My favorite of all time is um Richard Pryor. Oh yeah, yeah. Richard Pryor. It, I, I had to think because I got like three of them, but it's like Richard Pryor, um, Bernie Mac, and Dave Chappelle. They're my top three. Oh, some heavy hitters. Yeah. Oh, some heavy hitters. And what you think about Dave Chappelle's latest? But I'm gonna be honest with you, like my favorite, like for a long time, that made me be myself was Jim Carrey. Really? Yeah. How? What? Why? Because like when he did Fire Marshal Bill and Ace oh, Ventura and Dumber right. Dumber, yeah, like he like because I was goofy, but he made me change the perspective of how I look. You know what I'm saying to other people, right? Because he didn't care how he looked to other people, even though he was acting. But he was like that in real life until he started being on this godly like because he yeah he's he, a whole different yeah he, yeah. Now. But you know like when he first started, he didn't care. You know At what all. I'm saying? So that's how I was. Like I watched his image. I said, oh yeah, if he can do this. I can be myself and get away. You know what I mean? Because right. he's comfortable with being him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, like, I, like, he was, like, one of my favorite. Like, he, like, in my top, like, 10, top five. Like, he was, like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, like, Jamie Foxx. Like, he, like, it's so many of them. You know what I'm saying? All the way to the Waynes. I love Marlon Waynes, Kevin Hart. It's so many of them. Trace I love Morgan. Kevin Hart's, how Kevin Hart switched it up with his, uh, his Netflix documentary. Yeah. True story. He went from the, you know, the comedy to the serious acting, but it was in the co- it was that was a cold movie. That was a cold yeah, series. How actually. he was telling his whole life story, the documentary, and right. he still made it funny. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. That's I mean, what I love about him. How he uses family, and he can laugh. He can make you you laugh off of his family. True. And that's what I needed to start doing. Cause I, I like if I tell stories on how my family is. It's like with the with the old the the you said the the uh, old man character yeah. you have. That's a somebody from your family, right? Well. 
excuse me. It's my first. It's my first uh boss that I ever. Oh saw yeah, the first door -door. boss, first boss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, man, so yeah. you have it. You you got it right there. I mean, yeah, I, I but look, no, I got. I, that's what I'm saying. Like my next content that I'm about to put out is about to be fire because, like, I was just talking to my mentor earlier, and he was basically like, "Bro, all of these people that came through the doors of selling that was characters, you was that platform to bring a character to life. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I can play a drunk person." I can play a drunk, my drunk auntie. You know what I'm saying? I could play my drunk uncle. Right, you know what right, I'm right. I can play my crackhead cousin, or you know what I'm saying? Or my crazy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Whoever it is, you know what I'm saying? I could bring that, but I'm going to make them all salespeople. <laughs> That, you, you know, know what I mean? Crazy. I can't wait to see that. So when you when when, when can we expect that? I want, I want that. Yeah, I'm I'm, that. I'm writing right now. So like I just started writing today. So I say within like a couple of weeks. Like I probably have something put together probably tomorrow because like I got some stuff mailed because I'm gonna be here for like a whole week. So I gotta get a lot of content while I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? So I might just throw some on the gram like a, a snippet reel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just yeah. to see how that go. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait for that. Every yeah. time you drop something, I see a video pop up about. I'm like ah. But they all gonna be like salespeople, you know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. my whole brand is a sale. I'm not changing that, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna add to it, but people know me for that, you know what You're I'm saying? You're a master salesman. Yeah. Like, you know what? I, this is two different worlds, but I wanna see you and uh, the Wolf of Wall Street just get in the same room and sell things because he's like he's the master salesman but to me i think you the master salesman because oh, you you, jordan belfort jordan belfort you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying i think you i the like jordan salesman belfort too he's salesman because when you was like yo uh get off my porch i'm looking for him too where he at yeah. you know what i'm saying like certain things you come back and you said once you once somebody's laughing what they're gonna do tell you no that'll never happen right. so it's like that mentality and that approach like you've learned demeanor when it comes to sales it's like yo it, you don't come across those kind of people who just take that and master it. They do it or they yeah. try it or yeah. they're, you know, they have someone instructing them to do it, but where's the masters at? And it's so, it's so few of those people and you happen to be one of them. So that's solid, bro. That's a solid, solid ass, like come up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I respect it. that all the way. And I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see you doing your thing, grinding on the movies and stuff and to be working with, you know, King Batch and, and Jamie Foxx and being on those sets because I love those full circle stories. Right. And you have a full circle story like, yo, yeah. I could have, this guy could have just flew me back to Detroit. This would have never happened. Right. No one knows that, you know what I'm saying, this 200 million view video would have never happened. Or me running into Jamie Foxx would have never happened. Right. Me running into this Laker doctor would have never happened. Had I, you took that flight. So a lot of things happen for a reason, and, and that was one of the reasons. It was for you to get back out there. Yeah, and that's get the how I was trained. No guts, no glory. You know what I'm saying? Like Exactly. So, yeah, we wrapping it up. We're going to wrap this up. But, shoot, man, it, it, it was dope talking to you, man. And I appreciate you for, for coming through and, and chopping it up with me on this late night yes, <laughs> on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Monster Moves. Make sure you guys follow the funny sales. I'm going to have his, his at at the bottom of the screen. And, you know, support him. You know what I'm saying? I support him. I love everything he do. And, you know, I've been watching you since you was the first group of viral people to come across my computer. Right, you know what I'm saying? It. So uh, congrats and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and good luck on the you, you yeah. know your, your career moving forward, bro. Yeah. And shout out to Jahan, too. That's this movie that is about to drop uh, Valentine's Day 2022. It's called You Married That. That's my second movie that I was in. So shout out to my boy Jahan Jones. It's like an all-star cast with like April Jones, Amarion Baby Mama. Uh -huh. She in it, Red Grant, all the way to Michael Collier. Um, it's a lot. Jacob, the uh, cop, Jacob Burger, uh -huh. he, he in it. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of people in it. Tony O Skits. That's dope. Uh, Big Ja. Yeah. So Big Ja. I follow him on Facebook. Yeah. I be seeing him do his thing. Yeah, he killing on Facebook too. Yeah. I've yeah, been watching yeah. him. Yeah. I'll be watching him. Shout out to him. Yeah, he just got married too, y'all. I Shout see that. Yeah. You know what's crazy? 
I know we're supposed to be wrapping this up, but I seen y'all got married like within like a month apart from each <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, we did. I didn't even know he had got married. He was like, congratulations to you too. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, because I seen his picture go up <laughs> yeah. and, and get married and, it, and, and I seen yours go up. I thought you was on the movie set. <laughs> He was in front of Niagara Falls. I was like, yo, he he do it big because I ain't really seen the homies who be getting married in front of the big old water fountain. Like, right. this is for real life right here. Right, right. That was solid. That was a dope, yeah. dope that was a dope look for real. Yeah, for that real. Was, it was, I loved it, man. It was amazing. Life changing event, man. Life changing. Well, congrats on that. You know yeah, what I'm appreciate saying? Appreciate it. Yes, sir. And uh, this is the Monster Moves. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Holla at your boy, Jay Bling. Out. We out. Yeah, I ain't slowing down, let me give you that.